week. <laughs> Catch the announcements on Facebook. They'll have them posted later, all right? It's glad to have everybody here today. Welcome. Yeah. All of are smiling. A beautiful, sunshiny day outside. Yeah. Let's stand and pray and get ready to worship. Amen. Amen. Father God, we thank you for this day that you've given unto us. We thank you for the opportunity that we've been given to come into your house and gather together in one body and one mind and one accord. I pray, Father God, that today that you would touch the hearts and the minds of the people. Father, I pray that you would begin to bring restoration where restoration needs to take place. I pray, Father God, that you would shift things into alignment for things that need to be put into place. Father God, I pray that you would help us to surrender our hearts, surrender our minds and our bodies over to you. Father God, to be a vessel that only you can use for your glory, for your kingdom purpose. I pray, Father God, that you continue to raise up kingdom men and women who will go out of bounds to the hedges and into the highways to do your work. Let us be your hands, 
I hear the Father saying, if you'll just step out and accept the healing that's in the room, it's yours. I felt it strong while ago. I don't know who's hindering and not wanting to receive that healing touch, but I'm telling you the healer is in the room. I felt it back here. I felt the virtue go through my own body. I know the healer is in the room. Whoever it is and whoever wants the healing virtue to flow, all you have to do is receive it. Jay, I want you to sing that part one more time. If that's you today, lift your hands. If you need to come to a place in an altar and pray, I didn't need to leave my spot. The virtue touched my body right where I stood. We get the misconception that we have to come to an altar to receive prayer, to receive a healing. But when his presence is thick in an atmosphere like it is today, all you have to do is receive. Here comes the healing of the Lord. Yes, Lord. Here comes the healing of the Lord. Here comes the healing of the Lord. Here comes the healing of the Lord.
Would you lift your hands again this morning? Father, we thank you this morning for your presence in this house. Lord, we thank you for healing in this house this morning. Father, we thank you for those that have received healing today. Lord, we ask God you would just continue to pour out your spirit upon your people. Father, that we would continue to live in the light of your glory and love on this earth. Father, that you would help us to be who you've called us to be, who you've prepared us to be in this place. Father, we thank you today, God, for receiving in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hey, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hey, Jesus. 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 Aren't you glad this morning that we can receive from the Lord wherever we are? And whenever we are. <laughs> Amen. It's good to see you in the house this morning. Good to see your worship in the house this morning. I believe that we make our Father happy when we worship Him like that. When we bring His presence down into our presence. I believe it changes things, but I believe it makes him happy to be able to come and be with his people. Amen. 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 I want to say thank you this morning to all of those. I think Kids Church just left. I think they just exited on their own. Uh, but, uh, I want to say thank you to everybody that helped with the trash pickup yesterday. That was our second one for this year. Davis County approved us for two rounds. And uh, in case you didn't know what we were doing, we did one last month and one this month. We got $600 for that Saturday morning. Uh, one $600 was to go toward kids going to youth camp this summer. And the other $600 is to go toward any outreach program that we do throughout this year. So praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Now, since I mentioned youth camp, I want to share with you. There, there are just a few people that have kids going to youth camp, and there's a whole lot more of you that don't. If you'd like to help some of us out that do, we would be glad to have you sponsor our children. We've had a couple of children sponsored already. The cost of camp is $140 per child, uh, and uh, we always commit at least $50 uh, for each uh, parent to pay. So each parent pays 50 of that. And we always work hard to try to raise the other $90. So we want to ask you, if you would sponsor a child, just let us know that you're going to, and we'll tell you how to give that uh, in the offerings over the next few weeks. Uh, we also, just to make sure that there's extra money to get them to camp, we usually have to feed them on the road somewhere going to Lexington, those kinds of things, and we don't put all of the burden on one person to spend their money on the gas, to get them there and so on and so forth. We always try to help out with those costs. So uh, on Thursday night, this coming Thursday night, May 5th, uh, meet us at Cold Stone Creamery. And we'll have some ice cream together and the youth will get a proceed of money that, that of what is raised during that evening. And I'll post the hours. I can't remember right off the top of my head. I think it's uh, six to eight. Six to eight maybe, somewhere around that. Uh, so meet us there. I'll post those on Facebook uh, later today, hopefully. I'll try to remember to do that. Uh, so you can join us Thursday night, and then we'll have another one coming up in June uh, for you to be able to have some ice cream and help raise some money. Amen. Amen. Next Sunday is Mother's Day. Now, we celebrate women around here on Mother's Day, understanding that not everybody is a physical mother, biological mother, but females have a mothering nature. Yes. So we want to encourage all of our females in the building to be here next week, and we'll have a gift for you. 
knowing that you can be a mother to somebody else, even if you're not a biological mother. Yeah. Our daughter is 14, and she mothers some of the smaller children. Those of you that know Jalen, she's like this. She's like her mother in that, uh, that uh, they started early in mothering other people around them. So to celebrate next Sunday, we'll have a gift as you're leaving, but I'll be calling on a couple of guys to help me out that morning early, and we'll have some muffins for the mothers. And, and we'll let the guys in too, but we'll, we'll have some muffins that morning uh, about 9.30 and I'll have some coffee made, that kind of stuff. Uh, something grab and go if you need a snack, hopefully not in the middle of church, but if you need a snack before we get started with worship to boost your energy, a little carbohydrate to boost you just a little bit, maybe you'll worship better. We'll, we'll take care of that on Sunday morning. Uh, Mother's Day is typically... Also, in our denomination, we have a home for children in Sevierville, Tennessee. If you're ever down in the Pigeon Forge area, Gatlinburg area, look up the Church of God Home for Children and take a tour. It's well worth it. In the Home for Children, there is a, a house that's called My Old Kentucky Home. It was sponsored and built by the state of Kentucky, and it needs a remodel. So right now, their money is being raised across the state of Kentucky. Mother's Day is always a time when money is focused toward the home for children so i want us to do something a little different next sunday a lot of us don't carry cash so i'm giving you a week's notice bring cash next week <laughs> we will take up a special offering but we're going to do it in the old-fashioned style of a penny march not in pennies we're going to do a money march okay we don't want to take up 30 minutes with pennies we're, we're going to we want some cash in the bucket uh, so we're going to do a money march next sunday morning during service where all of us adults are going to let the kids bring that offering forward. So just have your cash ready. Bigger bills are welcome, right? Yeah. Get it there faster. And we'll, put, we'll let the kids bring it forward and put it in that offering. That'll be a separate offering from our tithes and offerings next week. All right? Amen. All right. You still love me? Yeah. Amen. Amen. I love you too. More than you can possibly know or imagine. All right, let's take up our tithes and offerings today. God is so good to us. He blesses us to be able to give. He requires, according to his word, for us to give him 10% and we get to live on 90. Isn't that generous? And then we give offerings. We give to missions. We give uh, to the ladies' ministry, to the youth ministry, to children's ministry, and all the other things we give to. We want to give this morning. So stand with me one more time. Let's look happy to be a cheerful giver. <laughs> Even if you gave online. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you this morning for all your blessings and ask you to add your blessings to the building of your kingdom. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. service started. Wow, look at how excited everybody seems to be to get to be here. Yeah. Everybody was fellowshipping and just it felt good in here. Uh, and the crowd looks great. Some of you guys have not been with us for a while. We're glad you're back with us today. Uh, and for the newcomers, you're now family. We just hey. love you. We're glad yeah. you're here. Uh, we, we are just honored to that you chose to be with us on a Sunday morning. Amen. 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 Tonight's service starts at 5 o'clock. Minister Steph Bowling will be with us. Amen. Melissa and I have known Steph for almost 10 years and uh, have watched her from the process of not being in church at all, I don't think, when we first met. 
uh, to now being in ministry. And I uh, reached out to her this week and asked her if she would like to come and be with us tonight. So she's excited and honored to be part of our worship service tonight. And I'm excited to hear what God has laid on her heart Amen. to preach for us. Amen? Amen. How many of you know that there is life in the seed? Amen. Every year when we start gardening, the Lord gives me at least one message out of the garden and sometimes several of them. And there's just something about the process that, I don't know, it just it's like winter has finally ended officially when you see the ground till. It's, it's like it's finally over and you can start thinking about the life and the, the production that is to come. So I was in the garden this week and uh, the Lord began to speak to me about the seeds that we were putting in the ground. Uh, Brother Al came over the other afternoon and helped us and when we were planting a row of peas, he said, you know, these don't look any better in this state than they do when they're done. <laughs> um, <laughs> not a lover of green peas. Uh, but I, I, I began to listen to the Lord while I was out there and he began to speak about what happens with a seed. You see, there's something phenomenal that takes place. Things that are left over from last year bring new life into this year. Yeah, well, I'll get there in a few minutes. <laughs> Matthew chapter 13, beginning in verse number 3. Matthew chapter 13, beginning in verse number 3. I'm in the King James this morning. He spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell on stony places, where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprang up, because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, the thorns sprung up and choked them. But others fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who has ears to hear, let him hear. Father, we praise you this morning for all that you do for us. We thank you, Father, for never giving up on us, for allowing us to have the understanding, God, that there are times in life when we may look dead and dormant, but your life is still inside of us. And Father, we thank you and we honor you today. We ask that you would anoint each of us to hear and receive from you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. One of the things that we love doing in our garden is somewhere, usually in the back row, this time we went back row and along the fence line and everything else, uh, we put out a certain kind of flower. Now, that flower, I'll get a hold of one of these. That flower is a flower that when it blooms, it follows the sun. When the sun comes up, it turns its bloom toward the sun. And as the sun moves over the earth, the sunflower will turn itself to follow the sun. It's amazing how God creates such things. Now, this little bitty seed, you probably can't even see it from where you're sitting. Little bitty thing. Some things can be done with this at this stage. You could take that and roast it, put a little salt on it, and have a snack. It's a sunflower seed. Matter of fact, you can buy whole bags of them that have already been taken out of the seed pocket, if you will, and, and salted and roasted, and they're ready for you to have a snack, right? But if you take this little seed and you put it in good ground and you give it the life-giving things that it needs, sunlight, Water, care, watching over it. Somebody asks us just about every year when our garden gets going really well, what kind of fertilizer do you use? Prayer. Right. 
That's right. Amen. We go out in the evening and pray and water and pray and pray and water and pray. And we ask God to give in abundance what we've put in the ground. That's right. So out of this one little seed will come a stalk. Now, we love planting. This one is a, a, a mammoth Russian. We love planting these things. Some of them are called just mammoths. I'm getting somewhere. Don't go to sleep on me just yet. <laughs> Mammoths are known for their size. That's right. So a couple of years ago when we planted a row of mammoth sunflowers, some of them were 12 to 13 feet tall. Wow. That's a tall plant out of a little bitty seed. That's right. I'm setting you up here and you don't even know it. Go ahead, Pastor. The bloom on those things was about that big. Yep. Thousands of seeds created from each plant, each bloom. They were huge. When we took the wheelbarrow out and we began to cut those things down, I figured out real quick, I needed a hatchet or something. Because the stalks had gotten about that big around. That's right. Come on. They were like sapling trees that we had to cut down. And when I brought them down, just like cutting down a tree, I brought them down, they smacked the ground, and then I went over and I cut off the bloom. That's right. And we put them in a wheelbarrow and took them into the garage. At that point, we had a choice. We could care for the blooms and harvest the seeds. Or we could be tired and go in the house and do what we did and let them molt. <laughs> and have them clean up the mess and get rid of them later. But in that season, so those sunflowers ended right there. <laughs> if we keep them in a cycle, however, you okay. provide food and you provide nourishment. Right. And you can even provide next year's crop out of the seed. Come on. Now, I want you to understand a few things this morning. First... The seed in the text that we read gives the sower his purpose. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People will say, well, gardening is, is, is hard work. Yes, it is. But if you remember when Adam and Eve messed up, <laughs> they were told that they would now have to work. Work the ground. Sweat of the brow. Right. To provide and to have the nourishment that they needed. It was no longer going to be just handed to them. Now work was involved. So we have to work for those things that we need. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. If anybody else has figured out how to get through life without ever having to work, let me know, please. <laughs> Deuteronomy 22 and 9 says, Thou shalt not sow thy vineyard with divers seeds. Lest the fruit of thy seed which thou hast sown and the fruit of the vineyard be defiled. In other words, in various seeds. In other words, you have to be careful what seed you're sowing. Right. That's right. Because it makes a difference. If you're looking at the seed and you just take a handful of whatever seed you can find and just throw them, guess what? You're going to have a mess. And what's going to happen is that some things are going to crossbreed and you're going to have weird looking and weird tasting vegetables, uh -huh. strange flowers, because they're going to cross with each other. They're going to be stranger than human beings. <laughs> we, we, are, we're, we, we have to be careful and know what we're putting where. Right. Man, right. So when you and I look at the seed that we can plant on this earth in a spiritual sense, we have to be careful where we're planting and what we're planting. Yeah. You see, every person that we come in contact with is worthy of some spiritual seed. Right. But the way you reach one person is not how you reach come another on. person. Come on. Because those people are individual. I hope I'm getting somewhere with somebody this morning. We have to be careful and have enough wisdom to understand that some people may take an old-fashioned tip revival and run to the altar and be good to go. Some people might be offended by that. 
Now, I know there are a lot of self-righteous people that would say, well, God, you should never be offended by anything God does. I'm not offended by anything God does. I'm offended by some things people do. Yeah, right. Come on. Right, right, Pastor. Go ahead. There is a difference. Because God is gentle and kind. Humans are not always that way. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. God can judge me because he is the faithful judge. Yeah. People can't judge me because they're going to be judged for the same thing they gave me. That's right. <laughs> According to Scripture. So we have to be careful of what we're planting where. Are you with me? Yes. Amen. Then, the Bible tells us in Matthew 6, 24, No man can serve two masters. Right. For either he will hate one and love the other, or else he will hold to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon or money. Now, we know that this is a parable about where, where your attention is. Right. And we often like to pick on money as big because it's pointed out there. But listen, that could be anything else in your life. Right. right. Come on. We can't give God 100% of our focus if we've got our focus on everything else. That's right. right. That's right. In, but, but what we have to do is figure out how to put God in the middle of everything else that we've got going on. Right. So that he's still in our attention. So how do you do that? You look at your job and figure out how to make it ministry. Yeah. What is ministry? Reaching out and loving on other people. Yeah. It's that simple. Yeah. Ministry is not this part of it you see me doing here. Right. Good. The day-to-day -day ministry, which all of us are called to do, is the work of an evangelist, which is loving and sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with every person we come in contact with. Yeah. Sowing our seed with everybody else that we come in contact with. So we look at those opportunities in the workplace. God, who can I talk to today that well, I can make a difference in? That doesn't mean you, had, you, 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 you beat them over the head for all of their lifestyle choices. It means that you simply show them love and kindness. Right. And he'll give you the opportunities to share the gospel. Amen. Amen. It also means that when we go to Walmart, <laughs> or Kroger, or any other place that we like to go and grumble and complain because they never have enough lines open, there's too many people, people are rude, they run into your buggy with their buggy, and all this other stuff, and you see Christians misbehaving in public in places like that. <laughs> Because they try to match the rudeness that they're finding in public. But listen to me. We are to be in this world, but not of this world. And live just a little bit better than those we're seeing around us. Uh, ouch. So I've learned to guard myself when I go to those places. Check my mood before I go in the door. <laughs> know what I'm about to encounter and prepare mentally for it so that my heart doesn't, or my mind doesn't mess up or my mouth doesn't mess up what's in my heart. Right? right? So that I don't turn somebody else off. Because it's in those moments that, <clears throat> unfortunately, it's those moments when you forget to do those things and you let the attitude fly mm -hmm. that somebody will be standing in the wings somewhere and say, aren't you the pastor of the church? <laughs> Don't you go to church on Sunday morning? <laughs> Did I see you on Facebook the other day giving God praise and now you're acting like that? Yeah. Uh -huh. Come on. Come on. Oh. Right. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> the seed gave the sower his purpose. What's my purpose in life? To sow seed. Uh -huh. To spread the love of God. Amen. The seeds of the gospel, if you will. I, and maybe you never did it, but I remember watching it as kids were taught in Sunday school about the life-giving uh, uh, seed and the, how that God brings life to us and they would take a little cup and put some dirt in it and stick a flower seed in it and in a few weeks the seed the, the plant would pop up and then they'd have it in time for Mother's Day to give their mom a flower and all that kind of stuff 
just a, a life lesson that you could walk through. Understanding that that seed has purpose. So many of us try to live our life thinking we don't have any purpose whatsoever. We're just here. We're just going through the motions. We're just doing whatever we think we want to do. And everything is co co coincidence and everything is just happenstance. And we just really don't understand. We're just bumping and bumbling around through life. But the truth of the matter is the Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. That's right. So as you and I are seeking the Lord and we're working with him, he is guiding us to the places we need to be. Right. Right. Does anybody like to grow things? You might like to grow stuff. <laughs> See, giving seed away is an easy thing. And I'm going to... I'll replace these. <laughs> <laughs> these were given to us. I'm going to share them with somebody. See, I placed an order with one of the most well-known companies of heirloom seeds, of pure seeds, and... It's a big farm in Missouri, and I think these came last year in my order. These were thank you for your order gifts. You might like to grow stuff. Carmen does. <laughs> Carmen, do you have any basil? Would you like some? Yeah. That's some cinnamon basil. Ooh. See, I just shared a seed with her. As a matter of fact, it's a whole bunch of seeds, but I just shared a seed with her, and it was that easy. Come on. Would you like to know what God has done? Awesome. Come on, Pastor. Would you like to know what purpose He's given my life? Mm -hmm. Isn't that easy? Yeah. It's that simple. God has given me purpose in my life because I've figured out who He really is to me. Right. He's given me purpose in my life, and my purpose has become, well, Pastor, you work a full-time job. Yes, and it's ministry from the time I walk in the door until I walk out. Even when I'm stressed, even when I'm aggravated, even when I don't want to be there, it's still moments of ministry that we have to watch for. Yes. Mm -hmm. Brother Sims likes to grow things. <laughs> he wants what somebody else got. What is that? Well, I can preach right there. Right there. Yes. 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 That's true. You set me up. You know? <laughs> I want what somebody else got because their gift is bigger. I want to sing like J.L. Everybody yes. thinks he does such a great job. But I want a voice like Sister Melissa who uh -huh. doesn't even need a microphone. <laughs> I want to be able to pray like Melissa does. I want to have that sweet countenance like Sister Sims. Go ahead, Pastor. Pray. I want this. I want that. And we fail to realize that God has placed in us the seed, the gift, the talent to be what He wants us to be. And your seed, your talent, your gift is individual to you. Help us, Jesus. For you to figure out who you are uh -huh. in God's kingdom. Come on, Pastor. Amen. Amen. You want some carrots? <laughs> <laughs> or some bee balm lemon. I don't even know what that is. I'm or a deal. <laughs> <laughs> the bee balm lemon? There you go. <laughs> I don't even know what that one is. It probably is. It repels the bugs, probably. <laughs> things. You and I have the ability to be so much more yeah. in this life and in God's kingdom than what we take the time to be. Come on. Right. We have the ability to impact lives all around us for the better. To show simply what God has done in us so that yeah. we can share His love with somebody else. Amen. Mm -hmm. Isn't that great? Tiffany, you're always trying to grow something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give you some carrots. Those are supposed to be easy. 
<laughs> Somebody else wants some dill? You like pickles? Anthony, you want some? Huh? You got a place to grow it? Huh? You find a place, he said. <laughs> we have the ability to understand our purpose because of what seeds God has put in us. Second point. The seed is what brings new life. Man. Yeah. So we have the option of doing something with our seed or just letting it rot. Mm -hmm. Letting it lay dormant. You can leave those in that packet for years. Mm -hmm. They'll eventually lose their strength and ability to live. Or you can put them in the ground. Mm -hmm. Put them in some dirt. And let them begin to grow. Now, I learned something the other day with, with potatoes. I've, I've never planted potatoes. I remember doing that with my grandparents, and we, you know, they, they knew exactly what to do. Uh, so I researched it enough. We found some red potato sets and some Yukon gold potatoes. You know, they're different kinds of potatoes. We didn't plant any blue ones or purple ones. Uh, but I, I said, okay, now what do we have to do with these things to be able to stick them in the ground? My thought process was you stick the whole thing in the ground and it'll do something. But I learned that each potato has the ability to produce multiple plants. Come on. Each one of the eyes in the potato, the little indentions, will begin to sprout. See, some of you are nodding your head. You've done this before. And you can cut that potato into pieces, giving each piece its own eye an ability to produce more. Come on. So I took a little bag of five red potatoes, and, and, and I took two bags, ten little red potatoes, and I was able to cut those up into, what, 20 or so? Potato sets to set out red potatoes. Now each one of those is going to produce dozens, probably, of red potatoes. But I had two of those Yukon Gold sections of potatoes that were big and chunky, they decided they didn't want to produce anything. They decided to rot. So in just a couple days' time, Jalen said, Dad, did you know some potatoes are growing mold? And I said, no. So we went and looked, and those two pieces had begun to rot Come on. and grow mold. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, that's what happens when we allow the events of our life To overtake our love for God. Amen. John chapter 12 verses 23 through 25 says, And Jesus said, Jesus answered them saying, this, The hour is come, good grief, that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth much, forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto eternal life. You see, what's here is dead. The life is ended. This is just the leftovers of a life. This is the leftovers of the plant. You have the option of taking the seed you've been given and doing what you want to with it. You can eat it. You can throw it into something, you can throw it away. You can cast it aside and say, I'm done with it. Or you can take what looks like something that has died and plant it and watch it come to life. Amen. Many of us have counted ourselves as dead and damaged. We're damaged goods that aren't good for anything. God can't use us because of the damage that's been done in our lives. God can't use us because of the mistakes that we've made. We think that God can't do anything with us because we've just messed up too many times. But can I tell you, God always will take those things that are dead and bring them back to life. Amen. As a matter of fact, in order to be used of God, you have to die. Come on. <laughs> I don't mean physically, I mean spiritually. Right. Right. Giving up the will, the stubbornness of I'm going to do it my way. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Come on. Good, yeah. And understanding that my steps are being ordered by someone that is far greater than me. Uh -huh. 
my body is under the control of the one who created it, regardless of what the doctors may say. Amen. We are able to speak life back into our body, into our situation, because God has given us his word, which brings life. Yeah. And if we will learn to use his life, his word, in our life, then we will soon see, as John said, that we will decrease while he increases. Amen. Amen. First Corinthians 15 and 36. Paul said this, thou fool, you <laughs> blunt, that which thou sowest is not quickened except it die. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bear grain. It may, change, it may chance of wheat or of some other grain, but God giveth it a body mm -hmm. as it hath pleased him. And every seed has its own body. God has given us the seed and the body that he wanted us to have. Amen. So when you look in the mirror, and I'm going to be physical here for just a minute. When you look in the mirror, instead of talking about how awful you look, Come on. Uh -huh. understand that that is what God chose to plant seed in. Right. Yeah. To give to you. That just ought to lift somebody's spirit right there. Right? <laughs> Come on. You and I have the ability to understand that God loves us so much, He placed His seed inside of us. Right. He gave us the love that He has through Jesus Christ, His Son. And we have the ability to live a life in that love. Mm -hmm. Number three, the seed is what has the potential to make life productive. Yesterday afternoon, as we were finishing up planting, Kip and Amanda were helping us put tomato plants in the, in the ground and we put potatoes in and sweet potatoes and then Al and Debbie got here we put in some uh, spaghetti squash and some more sunflowers and corn and beans and when we were finished putting everything in the weather had changed it wasn't going to rain so we watered it and I said alright guys here's your prayer time opportunity let's pray over this garden and we just began to walk through and pray <laughs> and then when we got finished with that Amanda said now what? I said, now we wait, and we pray, and we wait, and we pray, and we see what God will do with what effort we've placed. You see, where we are right now as a church, where we are right now as individuals in our lives, is dependent upon how much waiting and praying we've been doing. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's good. <laughs> Because we have added what it takes to make production. Mm -hmm. we've, get, we've put the seed in the ground. We've put the plants in the ground. We've added the water. We've added prayer and sunshine. You know, God's taking care of his part. Now we watch to see what happens. Two years ago when we planted sweet potatoes for the first time, they grew into these huge plants. So much so that you couldn't even walk between them anymore. They were huge. They bloomed. I didn't know they did that. Yeah. <laughs> I thought we had some morning glories out there. And they were so, They were just the, the sweet potatoes. They were blooming. And after the blooms had gone away, Melissa was out there. She said, how do we know what if there's any sweet potatoes? I said, we have to wait and have faith. Well, it's killing me. I don't know if there's anything under there. If these things have grown all this time and done all this stuff, and there's nothing under there. <laughs> they just like us. I've done all this stuff, and they're still not coming to the Lord. I've done all this stuff, and they still don't come to church with me. I've done all this stuff, and they still won't read their Bible. I've done all this stuff, and they still won't change their life. <laughs> but we've added what, what they needed to be productive. That's right. Now it's up to them. That's right. I reminded her of watching the movie Faith Like Potatoes. Oh, yeah. If you've not seen yeah. that, go watch it. It's a really good yeah. movie, and it teaches a lesson about waiting and watching. 
And what happened when we finally, when I pulled the trigger and said, okay, now you can dig up sweet potatoes, she was flying to the garden. <laughs> they had them dug up and were sending me pictures of what, with a wheelbarrow full of sweet potatoes, some of them much bigger than our hands. I mean, they were huge yeah. sweet potatoes. God had done his part, right. but it took the patience of waiting and having faith that continues Go ahead. even during the wait to see the production take place. Man. Everything's not like a squash or a cucumber. <laughs> they bloom and you see the, the produce. They're right there in front of you. You can't miss it. Some plants take longer to prepare. Yeah. Amen. Matthew 13, 31 and 32 says another parable he put forth unto them saying the kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed which a man took and sowed in his field which indeed is the least of all seeds. But when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs and becometh a tree so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. Now I'm going to jump because it mentions a mustard seed and we talk about that little bitty tiny mustard seed in having faith. So I'm going to share that scripture and then I'm going to tell you how we miss it. Matthew chapter 17 verse 20. And Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have the faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall be removed, and nothing shall be impossible to you. We often focus on the fact that the mustard seed is so little, and it only takes a little bitty tiny amount of faith to do something great. But we miss the concept of what the mustard seed can become. Right. Mm -hmm. That's good. Go ahead. That little bitty tiny speck of a seed. If I had some, I mean, you, you, you barely can see them. They're so tiny. But those little bitty tiny, teeny mustard seeds, when they're planted and nourished, they grow into one of the largest plants. Like a tree that birds can even build a nest in. They have strength and stability Go ahead. because of the little bitty tiny yeah. seed. Go ahead. So when we're talking about, oh, you, all you need is that little bitty tiny bit of faith to make things happen. All you need is to nourish what little bitty tiny bit of faith you have to become something great in God's kingdom. Because if you will nourish the little bit of faith you have, it will grow into something that will allow you to have faith in God enough to know that beyond the shadow of a doubt, He has everything under control. Right, that's right. And then we don't have to worry about that little mustard seed every day. If I just have a little bit of faith, if I just have a little bit of faith, just, ahead, just nourish what little bit you have and let it grow into something that God can use. <sighs> the fourth thing I want to get to you this morning is the seed is man's connection to the kingdom of God. Mark chapter 4, verses 30 through 32. It's talking about the same thing we just read in Matthew. Uh, and he said, Whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or with what comparison shall we compare it? It is like the grain of mustard seed, which when it is sown in the earth is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. But when it is sown, it grows up and becomes greater than all the herbs. And shooteth out great branches so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow your ability in God's kingdom is to be greater than you can even imagine. Mm -hmm. He has prepared you. If you're placing his word in your heart, hiding his word in your heart, if you're putting his word in your system, then every moment of every day you have the potential of growth. Right. If you're adding, if, you, if you'll let me call that the sunshine, then adding the nutrients, the prayer, and then letting God fill your life with His rain, the presence when we worship. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> hmm. Then you have the ability of growing into something great and wonderful. Amen. In God's kingdom. 
Now, our ability to grow is not just so we can say, Woo, look how pretty I am. Right. Right. When our garden gets so large and the squash plants are waist high and all these things, Sister Frieda asked me one year, would you come pray over a garden if I put one out? Because I've never seen one grow that way. <laughs> Big and beautiful. But if all we ever did is stood back and looked at it and said, isn't it pretty? <laughs> We'd never get the goodness out of it. That's right. Amen. You've got to put the work in then yeah. to keep life going. That's right. For our family, those of you that have gotten to know us know that we can and we preserve and the freezer's full and all that kind of stuff. And we keep everything from one year to the next. We just finished off peaches from two years ago. We're, yeah, we're, we're, we're getting low on some things. I had dill pickle, no, I had bread and butter pickles last night from two years ago. And homemade ketchup from two years ago. And, you know, all of this stuff from the last time we canned. Preserving life and keeping things going. We're not growing in God just to sit and look pretty. Come on. Right. Amen. The Bible tells us in John chapter 4, and I'm going to close with this. John chapter 4, verses 35 through 38. Say not ye there are yet four months, and then comes the harvest. Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they're already white unto the harvest. And he that receiveth, he that reapeth, receiveth wages and gathereth fruit unto life eternal. That both he and that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And herein is that saying true: one soweth, another reapeth. I sent you to reap that whereon you bestowed no labor. Other men labored, and you are entered into their labors. That comes into play many times in our lives. For those of us that had praying parents or grandparents, a lot of the good things we reap in our life are not because of what we've done, but because of their prayers continuing. Right. When I look at where our church is today, we're getting better and stronger all the time, and I have to attribute that to the fact that Brother Sonny Whiteley came in 1967 to Owensboro and planted a church. Amen. That church became us many years later. I have to look at the side of our history from Rushing Wind Church of God when uh, Joseph Hagen pastored for many years. He pastored with a harvest with a harvest mindset and a vision to see people want into the kingdom of God. And then I have to look and give him credit for the work that he did. I have to look at the 17 or 18 years that Brother and Sister Sims were pastors of the church here. And that they watered and planted and they went through some hardships and some dry seasons, but they survived. And so did the church. I have to give credit for all of those that have gone before me because we're standing on their work and on their prayers. Amen. We are not who we are today just because whoop, we were born and here we are. That's right. right. Well, come on. <laughs> you didn't just appear on earth miraculously. You got here by divine intervention. That's right. Oh, well, it was nature. Yes, nature takes its course, but who created nature? Yeah, right. Amen. It's all by the design of God. That's right. Will you stand with me this morning? I want us today just to pray a simple prayer, and then I want to ask you to respond at the altar that God would help us Understand that there is life in the seed. Some of you have thought you were not worth living. But God placed a seed inside of you that needs life. Father, we thank you this morning for all of your blessings. And we thank you, Lord, that you've given us the ability to be together today. Lord, to be rained on by your presence. To be watered by your presence today. Father, we praise you. And we thank you, God, that you've given us the seed to nurture and to grow. And Father, I ask today, God, that you would help each of us today, before we leave here, to respond to that process that you've placed in our lives. And recognize the life that you've placed inside of us, that we can grow into something greater in your kingdom. Father, we thank you for what you're doing and what you've already done in this place. 
And I thank you, Father, for our friends, our family members here. As we grow together, we give you honor. Would you come this morning and give God thanksgiving? Work on your garden inside you.